Hey everyone, so today I'm sharing some things that I no longer buy. I think this is such an interesting topic. If you are on social media at all, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, you're probably being fed videos all the time on recommendations of products to try or like Amazon must-haves you need in your life or game-changing products. And I do film videos on things I love, things I recommend, that's part of my job here on YouTube. But I always try to strike a balance in my own personal life and just cut back on areas where I can. I always feel just more at peace when I'm not constantly bringing things into my life. And, you know, over the past few years, I feel like the less amount of things I have, the better. It's just less stuff to manage, less stuff to organize. And I feel like in the end, you save money. So it really is like an all around win-win situation. I filmed a video like this a few months ago and a lot of you seem to like it. So I thought I would film a part two. I actually have a few videos like this on my channel. So I'll link a playlist in the description box below in case you like this topic, but I would love to know if there are any products that you no longer buy. Reading through the comments on my last video, I got inspired to cut out a few additional things that I really don't need. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. I have all different things to talk about, like beauty, lifestyle, home decor, clothing, baby stuff. So let's just jump into it. Let's actually start with this one. So this is one that I've resolved to no longer buy fairly recently, and that would be expensive SBS. There are so many different brands out there that make SBS that do different things, that have really nice textures, but in the end, the important part is that it is protecting your skin. And it's really important to wear an SPF every single day. That is something I've really been so diligent about in 2023. Because of that, I feel like I go through SPF fairly quickly because I am being really diligent about applying it every single day. And there are expensive higher end SPFs that I really enjoy. There are a ton of formulas that feel good, that look good, that protect the skin, that wear well on their own or under makeup. I have some that I'm currently working my way through. I recently tried the Kosas one and I really enjoy it, but I just can't justify the higher end price point of something that I'm going to use up fully, fairly quickly, and then have to repurchase over and over when there are so many great affordable options. The goal of this video is not to get you to buy anything, but I'll link some of my favorites in the description box below in case you're looking for a more affordable alternative. I really like the one from e.l.f. There's one from Good Molecules that's great. I really like this one from a K-beauty brand called Hymish. It feels and looks so good on the skin. And of course, you're protecting your skin as well. So in the end, if a higher end SPF is your favorite, like if that's what will get you to wear that every single day, then I say go for it because it is important to protect your skin. But maybe do some research and try out some of the more affordable options because there are a ton of great formulas that are less than 10 or $15. The next thing that I no longer buy, and this wasn't really an intentional choice. I feel like it was just something that kind of came about because I nailed down my makeup preferences would be loose powder products, except for like an actual loose powder to set your foundation. I'm talking like loose eyeshadow, loose highlighter, loose blush. I think loose highlighters and loose blushes can look so gorgeous on the skin because a lot of time the powder is so finely milled. It just looks really natural, super light, but I don't love the actual experience of losing, or no, the actual experience of using a loose product. I feel like it just gets so messy. And when it comes to powder, that's one thing because typically it's translucent and I feel like it doesn't make a, a big mess in general, although I do still typically prefer using a pressed powder. But when I use like a loose highlighter, it ends up getting everywhere, like all over my face, all over my hair, all over my clothes. And again, it looks so pretty on the skin. I have this loose highlighter from Artist Couture that I got in a subscription box years ago, and it was one of the prettiest highlighters I ever tried. But the actual experience of using it was just never enjoyable. I felt like it was so messy and I got it everywhere, and it was a little bit more difficult to get like a very targeted application with a loose product. I feel like this next one is going to have like split opinions, and it's not typically something I actually spend my money on, but it's just something I've, you know, opted out of, and that would be samples, especially beauty samples when I place an order on like Sephora's website or Ulta's website. You know how when you're placing an order, sometimes you can choose like three of those little foil samples and add them to your order. Typically, I don't even look at that section because what I found was happening is I would get all of these samples with all of my beauty orders and they would go in like a little container and then I would never use them. Occasionally, there is a product I want to try or there's like a little extra, like a mini mascara that I know I love. So I might choose to, you know, add that to my order. But for the most part, I just skip over the samples completely. I think it's partly because of what I do here on YouTube. YouTube, I test out and review a lot of beauty products. So usually I am reviewing a lot of products at any given point in time. So I don't typically need to add
add those to my routine as well. But I know there are a lot of people who really enjoy the samples and they think it's a nice way to try out products before committing to a full-sized option. So I definitely see the value in them. But for me personally, I felt like I was just putting them in a container and I would never get to them. I always told myself like, I'll bring those with me when I travel or I might try them out on occasion. I just ended up like donating them to a local women's shelter, which is a great way to pass those products along to someone else who might actually enjoy them or need them if you have a ton of samples laying around. Let's talk about a few things for around the house. I no longer buy coffee mugs. My husband and I accumulated so many coffee mugs over the years. We had some for the holidays. We had some every time we went and traveled, we picked up one. We had cute ones, fun ones, practical ones. I don't know why we had so many because there are only two of us that drink coffee in our house. I think I always told myself like, what if we have people over and we wanna make sure we have enough mugs so we kept a ton of them every time we decluttered our kitchen. When we moved into our current house like a year and a half ago, I actually just decluttered most of them because very rarely did we have people over who wanted to drink like a ton of coffee. So I kept a few. We actually have an ember mug. My husband bought it for me for Christmas a few years ago. And when I do drink like hot coffee and it's not in like a travel mug, that's what I use because it keeps my coffee warm for hours. So instead of having to like go and reheat it, I'll just stick with that one. That's a little bit of an investment. Estimate, so I'm not saying like run out and buy that one, but I feel like that coffee mug is so superior to all of the other ones. Even like the cute fun ones that I just really kept that one. And then a couple of like travel coffee tumblers that actually keep my coffee warm. The house that we live in has hardly any space, like any cabinet space in the kitchen. So we used to have like a full cabinet dedicated to mugs. And now our cabinet stores like all of our cups, all of our mugs, plates, bowls, everything. So I've cut back on buying a coffee mugs, but just kind of like dishes in general, because, you know, part of the reason is we don't have a ton of space to store them. And part of the reason is I just find that I don't really need them. It's nice to have like the occasional festive plate every once in a while during the holiday season, but I tend to just choose products or plates and serving dishes that I can use all year round. Kind of along the same lines, I really don't buy a lot of kitchen gadgets. I feel like when you watch like those Amazon must have videos or like products you didn't know you needed, a lot of people talk about things in the kitchen. And this might be different for you if you're really into cooking or baking. That is not something that I particularly enjoy. So it's not a big hobby for me, but if it is your hobby, then it might be fun to try like those different things. My husband definitely does the majority of the cooking and the baking out of the two of us. He actually really loves it, but he's not usually sucked in by like the idea of like fancy new kitchen gadgets. So I feel like as a whole, we've been able to cut back in that category. Part of the reason is again, our kitchen is a little bit smaller. We don't have a ton of space to store things, but I also feel like when it comes to like kitchen gadgets or machines or like different things specifically related to the kitchen, it's just not something that I, or we use super regularly. So it might make cooking like that one dish really easy and effective and fast, but how often do we actually pull it out and use it? And then we store it for the majority of the year. This next one's kind of random, but I no longer buy iPhone chargers or Apple watch chargers or like multi-use chargers because every single time I buy them, I'm let down by them. I don't know what it is about chargers, but it is kind of a nice luxury to have like the perfect charging setup. For a while, I was like buying these ones for my nightstand that would charge my phone, my Apple watch, my AirPods, all at the same time. But every single time I buy one of those, it either breaks after a few weeks or it doesn't actually charge my iPhone or it's not compatible with my watch or it takes forever. Like there's always a downside. After my last one broke, I told my husband, like, I'm just sticking with the typical charger that comes with my phone, that comes with my Apple Watch. It might not be as aesthetically pleasing. It's kind of annoying to have to plug, like, multiple things in at night and have cords everywhere, but the truth is, I feel like those are typically just the best option for me. I don't need to have, like, a fancy travel charger that, like, unfolds and I can put everything on. Sure, it would be nice, but again, I've had such a bad experience. Like, they all break on me or they're not compatible with my products and they don't work. So I'm just sticking with like the old school way of charging products kind of along the same line, but I, I no longer buy a lot of phone cases. For a long time, I would buy a lot of different cases and I would switch them out depending on my mood or the season. And it is fun because I think, you know, your phone is typically something you have with you. It's almost like a little bit of an accessory. So if you're able to purchase like really cute phone cases, it can be fun. But typically I just buy like a 
plastic phone case, like a harder plastic to protect my phone. And I feel like that works well enough for me. Again, this is something that you might be into and I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all, but I was cleaning out my room the one day and I had like a drawer in like this set of drawers just full of old phone cases. I didn't even have that phone anymore. So I just thought about all the money that I had spent on them and I was no longer using them because I am someone who typically does kind of upgrade my phone since I use it for work. So if I spend all this money on phone cases, I can really only use them for like one, two, three years at the most. So typically these days I just purchase like a clear phone case or maybe like a black one or whatever and I feel like that's good for me. Something else that I do not like to splurge on would be like one-time use special occasion outfits. I know that it has to happen sometimes if there is like a really special occasion and you want an outfit for that reason, then maybe it makes sense. But I think this really came into play for me when I became a parent because there are so many occasions for children where you're like, oh, I have to get them a new outfit. It has to be cute. It has to be perfect for the photos. We went to like a really fun Christmas brunch during the holiday season and I wanted to get my son an outfit for like his picture with Santa and we got dressed up. It was really cute. And I did get him a cute outfit. He matched with his cousins. It was adorable, but then he never wore it again. I wasn't even opposed to him wearing it again. I just felt like the occasion never came up. So after that moment specifically, I told myself like, I'm just not going to do those one time special occasion outfits anymore. I can still get him a cute outfit, but it's something that I'll want to reuse and put on him over and over and over again, especially because some baby clothes and toddler clothes are expensive. They cost just as much as an outfit for an adult. So I wanna make sure he'll actually wear it multiple times. And of course, sometimes you can go and like resell it or donate it, but I just feel like kids already grow out of outfits so quickly. I wanna make sure I'm getting as much use as possible with it. Same thing for me too. Like when I go to a wedding, I'm always tempted to buy like a really beautiful new dress because it is a special occasion. It's nice to get dressed up. But I also try to buy something I know I'll wear again, whether it is to like a future wedding or be able to wear it in another season or on a date night. I really try not to buy like one time outfits. I, I just feel like it's weird for me to only wear it for a few hours and then just be done with it. While we are on the topic of baby things, I don't know if this is like technically a baby regret. It's something that I stopped buying and that would be the Love Every subscription. I kind of fell into that because a lot of people I followed on YouTube, on Instagram said they loved it for their babies. And I will say there were some great products that actually came out of that subscription, but it's pretty expensive. I think it was $80 every two months. And basically you get a box delivered to your door with toys and books and different things that kind of help you entertain your baby where they're at, like in that specific age group. There were some really great things that came in my Love Every subscription that our baby ended up loving. There was like a wooden tissue box that had cloth tissues and he used that for a really, really long time. There was also like another toy where you would drop a ball in that he ended up loving, but Sometimes I felt like the box I got wasn't really there, like the value wasn't there for how much money I was spending on it. Sometimes I did, but sometimes I didn't. You know, as a first time parent, I wasn't always sure like how I could entertain my baby at that age. So that was really helpful because they kind of have like this whole guide as to why they choose the products. But I think if I was to, you know, ever have another child, I would probably know a little bit more of which toys to look for or which books they would like. So I could just end up purchasing those products separately and saving money. Also, a lot of the Love Every toys go up on Poshmark because people end up selling them. So you can get them for a significant discount if you really want those specific toys. And I think Target actually has a line of Love Every toys as well. So some of our baby's like favorite toys ever that he got through the Love Every subscription were available at Target for a significantly less expensive price. So I wouldn't say I like completely regret the Love Every subscription, but I will say it's very, very expensive. And after his first birthday, I just decided to cancel it because I think the price actually went up. And from like years one plus, it ended up being like, over a hundred dollars, it came less frequently, like every three months, but it just, it felt like a lot on baby toys. 
The last baby related thing that I've really cut back on would be books. Don't get me wrong, I love having baby books. We love reading to him and it's nice to have a really good variety of books, but we actually just started getting books from the library. Our library has so many good resources that I feel like I never really knew about. And then my husband and I actually started working from there occasionally when we do have childcare because it is so quiet at the library and we're able to get so much done. So while we were there one day, I actually just went over to the kids section and they have a ton of books and it's actually really nice to be able to bring home like a few new books every week and read those to him rather than constantly purchasing new books. For me personally, I really only do like audiobooks. I don't do a ton of physical books, but for a baby, he loves his physical books. So that is a great resource. I love our local library. And because of that, I've been able to save a lot because books can be really expensive. Let's talk about a few more beauty products. I really don't buy a lot of hair tools. I'm so tempted, like every time I'm online watching like some sort of fun hairstyle video to run out and buy like one of those three barrel curling irons where people kind of crimp their hair with them. I used to have one a million years ago and I didn't really use it then and I feel like maybe I would use it now, but I'm not too, too adventurous with my hair. I usually stick with my curling iron or my flat iron. My curling iron actually has like interchangeable wands. So it's great because I can create like different sized curls, but there's always something new, like a new blow dryer straightener all in one, a new hot hair tool, like just something that I always want to try. I've been tempted to buy like the new shark I forget what it's called. It's like Shark's version of the Dyson because I've heard such great things about it, but I don't know if I need it. It's expensive. There's just something about those like more high-end hair tools that I, I don't know. I can never like actually take the plunge and buy them. I saved all of my Ulta points and I was going to redeem them for a Dyson. I think I had enough to like cover the price of the Dyson and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't justify it even with my Ulta points. So in the end, I feel like I'm pretty content with the hair tools I have. And I just don't know that I would get a ton of use out of like something new and exciting and trendy and fun because I don't typically go out of the box too much when it comes to my hair. I no longer buy clear brow gels. I wish every brand launched tinted brow gels because it makes such a difference if you have really thin, sparse brows. Every time I use a clear brow gel, I have to spend so much longer actually filling my brows in Whereas if I use a tinted brow gel, it cuts down on my brow routine significantly. I think a lot of brands do launch tinted brow gels for the most part, even if they only have a few options, but occasionally a brand launches a new brow gel I want to try, but it's clear. And I know people like clear brow gels. Maybe you prefer to fill in your brows with a pencil or a pen, or maybe you have really thick voluminous brows and a tinted brow gel's just kind of a little bit too much for you. So I definitely know there's a place for them, but I've just decided to skip over them because I always end up wanting like that hint of color every single time I use a clear one. I am resolving to no longer buy those pH changing lip products. These are not my favorite products anyway, but I feel like they're so trendy right now that sometimes a brand launches one and I'm like, ooh, I really wanna try that one. I forget which brand did it recently, but I saw it on Instagram and I know in the back of my mind that I never liked the way my lips look with one of those products because it always ends up looking really bright pink on me and not like a flattering shade of pink, like an ugly shade of pink. So I just told myself I can no longer buy those if a brand changes or if a brand claims that it changes color based on your personal pH, like I instantly have to take it out of my cart or knock it off my list because I do have some of those products. But again, in the end, I never end up loving them on me personally. And I know it's really trendy right now, so I'm sure brands will be launching even more formulas and there probably will be some that I want to try, but I told myself I can no longer buy them. Last thing in the beauty category would be makeup bags. I'm always so tempted, like every time I travel to look for the best new makeup bag out there. And occasionally I will have to replace my makeup bag, but I haven't purchased a new makeup bag in a really long time because for me, I'm not necessarily into like all of the best compartments and being able to store everything like perfectly because usually when I'm packing, it's a little bit of a chaotic process and my makeup is always the last thing I pack. So the morning of, I just throw everything in my makeup bag, zip it closed, and then I just put it in my luggage in like a safe place, like in the middle of all my clothes so it doesn't end up getting like too jostled around. Also, when I'm traveling, I feel like I never have like the most ideal place to do my makeup. I'm usually like on the floor in front of a window or in a bathroom, so I usually just kind of like have my makeup bag open and I'm sorting through it and there probably would be a way to make it more of like a seamless, enjoyable process. 
But also when I'm traveling, I feel like I'm not always taking the time to do like my full makeup routine. So I've purchased a lot of makeup bags over the years. And in the end, I feel like I always just end up throwing my makeup in haphazardly anyway. How do you feel about that? Is there a makeup bag that's been like a game changer for you? I know some people use a makeup bag as like their daily makeup storage. So in that case, it might be a little bit different, but I usually do have my products that I use every day, like laid out in a drawer so I can see all of them, which would be really nice for traveling, but I just don't know how I would do that. So I've stopped buying them. I feel like I have a great one. I, I just got it in the mail as PR. It's like a Stony Clover one, and that one works great for me. It's lined in case something spills. It's big so I can fit everything in it, and I'm good with that one. The last thing is kind of random, but I used to buy these all the time, and that would be just fun pens or like fun markers. In my last video, I told you guys that I no longer buy like cute notebooks or journals because I really just do everything digitally. And I know people are so different when it comes to this category because a ton of people love like paper planners and notebooks and journals, but I really just do everything like on my iPad, my phone, my computer. So I very rarely actually write anything down unless I'm writing like a card or a thank you card or something like that. So I used to love journals and notebooks and fun pens. And I would always try like different ones and have fun going to the store and like looking at all of the office supplies and even like talking about it, I'm tempted to go and do that right now. But I very rarely have like a practical need to write anything down because I usually do prefer to do everything digitally. I will say my nieces come over a lot and they love coloring and there's something so therapeutic about coloring. So, you know, sometimes I'll buy them like new markers or new colored pencils and I do love sitting down and doing that with them, but that's not something I would probably do on my own very often. But anyway, those are the things that I no longer buy. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll put some related videos on the screen in case you like this topic. But again, I would love to know if there are any products or categories or things you no longer buy. I think it's such an interesting topic of conversation just among all of the videos on products that people recommend, myself included. So I like to switch it up from time to time. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you very soon with a new one. Bye.